Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at uh, functions where we have a radical in the numerator, denominator, or both. So you can see here I have devised six um, examples, and um, to go through this, again, you have a, uh, a link to Desmos where you can see what the graph is for each of these functions that I do, so therefore that uh, you can kind of verify uh, that the domain is you know correct if you're working on your own. I'm not going to connect to that link just because I want to try to keep this video as kind of short as possible. So in addition to that, um, I'm also not going to write out the inequality graph. Um, hopefully that helps some of you for me doing it, but at kind of this stage now, I'm just going to go, you know, explain the process and then get right into the interval uh, notation. But again, if it helps you, you know, especially when you're first learning this and it helps you to draw the graph, then draw the graph and you'll see where my interval notation, you know, kind of comes from on the inequality. Okay, so in these type of examples here, we have a rational function, but now we have a radical in the denominator. So the first thing that comes to mind is saying, all right, well, whenever I have a radical, that has to be greater than or equal to zero, right? So let's go ahead and zoom in here. Um, you can see all my problems I'm going to do. Yay, yippee me. So we have square root of 3 plus x, and you're going to say greater than or equal to zero. But, aha, this is now in the denominator, and we know that the restrictions of the of a rational function in the denominator is the denominator cannot equal zero. So therefore, I can't have three plus x, square root, I'm sorry, of three plus x be greater than or equal to zero. It can only be greater than zero. So the kind of key is whenever you have a radical in the denominator, just set it greater than to zero, not e greater than or equal to, all right? Now, we can show our steps here, you know, for the first one, I will, you square both sides, but I mean, it's really kind of a mute point because when you, or a mute step really, because they're squaring that undoes that to a three plus X and is greater than zero. So, I mean, zero squared is zero. So you can obviously see my <laughs> work here. So therefore I subtract a negative three here and then I have X is greater than negative three. Okay, so again, I just think about this and saying, all right, the X is greater than negative three. That means all values that are greater than negative three. So again, when you're thinking about writing your set notation, you think of like the smallest number first to the largest number, right? So it looks something like smallest number to the largest number. Well, and it could be parentheses or brackets, right? Okay. So I think negative three, if X is greater than negative three, then negative three has to be my smallest value. And then it's going to be all numbers greater than negative three, so that's going to go towards infinity. Now, since X is greater than negative three, that means that negative three is not included, so not included in the domain, so it's going to be parentheses. And then infinity is also not a number, so that's going to be parentheses as well. Okay, and there's your domain in interval notation. All right, next one. Now, I'm basically putting the radical in the numerator. So this comes in important because you can kind of see we have two restrictions here. We have a radical, and we also have a variable in the denominator. So I'm going to set them kind of separately. So I have the square root of x minus 1. Since it's not in the denominator, it has to be greater than or equal to 0. And then I have x equal to 0. There's really no other expression except x is equal to 0, so that's kind of nice. Um, x is going to equal to 0. Now, oh, why did I set the, why am I taking the radicand? I didn't show that before. I was wondering, I was like, you just take the radical, whatever's under the radical greater than or equal to zero. I don't know why I showed that, but I guess that's kind of nice that some of you may be saying. Um, so anyways, I can go ahead and solve this one. This one really requires no work. So x is greater than or equal to one is within my domain, but then x is equal to zero makes this undefined. So really you can kind of think about it like x cannot equal zero. So this is saying x has to be greater than or equal to one and x cannot equal zero. So in this case, I'm actually gonna use a number line to explain this. So let's say, you know, here's zero, like here's one, here's negative one. So it's saying x has to be greater than or equal to one. So all numbers that are greater than or equal to one are going this way. And then it says x cannot equal zero. Okay, cool, x can't equal zero. But guess what? That really doesn't matter because anything between zero and one is not in the domain anyways. The domain is only from one to infinity. So it's just kind of important to make sure that you kind of visually understand that. Um, when And using a number line I think is really helpful. So my domain here is going to be one towards infinity. And again, it's one because in this case it's included because um, it's greater than or equal to. 
All right, so now we again have a radical in the numerator and a denominator. So we need to find the values that are not, that make the denominator equal to zero as well. So I set my radicand greater than or equal to zero. And then I set my denominator equal to zero to solve. Or again, remember these are what's not in the domain. These are what's in the domain. So I go ahead and solve, subtract a six. I guess I'll subtract a six, divide by two. X is greater than or equal to negative three. Too fast, hopefully, maybe. Subtract six, divide by two. And then here I'm going to add one, divide by two. So therefore, X is equal to one half. All right, so actually this kind of does helpful to draw the graph here. So now, in this case, I have negative three. Let's put a zero, and then let's put like one half here. So now, I have X is all values that are greater than or equal to negative three. But then, when x is equal to 1 half, that's not in the domain. So at 1 half, I'm going to have a hole. So this domain is going to look like all values, but it can't be true for 1 half because it's, uh, that's what makes the denominator equal to 0. So I have to kind of skip over that and draw there. So my domain here is going to be negative 3, which is included, to 1 half, which is not included, union, oops, sorry, 1 half to infinity. Okay, um, all right, let's go and look on the next one. Ooh, so these next ones I have radical, oh, I guess I don't have radicals all. So here I have the radicals in the numerator and the denominator. So again, remember for the one in the denominator, you can just set it greater than zero, and for the numerator, just set it greater than or equal to zero. And let's just show our work for both of these so we can like make sure we're doing this right. So I have x plus three is greater than zero, and then I have one minus x, I'm sorry, that's greater than or equal to zero, and that one's greater than zero. Um, so now we just go ahead and solve and subtract a 3 on both sides. I get x has to be greater than or equal to negative 3. Now this one, um, rather than subtracting a 1 and dividing by negative, I'm just going to add the x. Remember I told you at the beginning, I was just saying, you can just really like throw the x to the other side. The only important thing is sometimes this gets a little difficult to like read. So if you flip it so the x is on the left side, just make sure you keep the inequality the way it was. So since here the inequality is pointing towards the x, just make sure it's pointing there again. So now I have x is greater than or equal to negative 3 and x is less than 1. I don't know why I said I wasn't going to graph them using inequalities because that's really the best way to understand these. So I'm going to graph these all separately. And if you remember graphing compound inequalities in Algebra 1, what we did is we graphed a inequality. And well, we graphed them. And then what we did is we found the intersection or the graph what that was true for both of my inequalities. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to graph each of these separately, and then I'm going to combine them together on one graph. And obviously, once you get used to this, you can just do graph them you know, together or not even graph them at all. So x is greater than or equal to negative 3 is going to be a closed point, looking like that. x is less than 1 is an open point, all values less than 1. And then you can see that the only section where the graphs are exactly the same is between negative 3 and 1 where that's open. So now, if I want to write this domain, you got to think, all right, well, how can I write this domain here? Well, it's really from negative 3 to 1, where negative 3 is included and 1 is not included. So it'd be an open circle. All right, next one. Basically, it looks like the exact same process, right? I mean, radical in numerator, radical in denominator. So let's just kind of set it up here. I'll have x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. The radicand in the denominator, x plus 5, is greater than 0. Go ahead and solve. Add a 1. So I have x is greater than or equal to 1. Subtract a 5. x is uh, going to be greater than negative 5. Now, this one kind of looks a little interesting. I'm actually just going to graph these on the same graph here, because as I graph this, eh, let's just do them separately. It's not that much extra work. 1, 5. Uh, 1, 5, and then let's do 1 and 5. Yeah. Okay, so x is greater than or equal to 1, so that's going to look like this. Uh, when x is greater, ooh, seriously? <laughs> I was not paying attention. All right, so, okay, so let's fix this here. I did not scale. I, for some reason, I read 5 and not negative 5, so let's fix that. So, oh, that wasn't supposed to happen. All right. So, sorry. That's negative 5. That's 1. 
that's negative five, that's one, that's negative five, and that's one. Because it's a, you know, an X value should be going from left to right, increasing order. So X is greater than negative five is going to be a big open circle. All values greater than is going to be going to the right. X is greater than or equal to one is going to be at one, but all values greater than or equal to one is going to be going to the right. And now we're looking for when is the two graphs the same? Well, you can see here, I don't have anything for negative five in both equations, so that's not true. And then like even like, I don't know, like negative three. I have something in this graph, but I don't have something in this graph. So this negative three is not defined because again, like let's plug negative three into these equations. Negative three plus five is two. Square root of two, good. Negative three minus one is negative four. You can't take the square root of negative four. So therefore, you have to make sure you only choose values that are true for both inequalities. And that is only going to be where one from one to infinity. So my domain in this case is going to be from one to infinity. All right, last but not least here is I have a nice little radical. I don't have anything in the uh, numerator, so this is kind of like example number one. So all I need to do is set my radicand of uh, negative x is greater than zero. But here I have to divide by negative one, so just remember, oops, yeah, divide by negative one. Just remember that, so therefore it becomes x is now less than zero. Okay, well, I can go ahead and all values that are less than zero, well, that's going to be from uh, negative infinity to zero. And I was about to put a bracket there, and then I was like, oh, you got to be careful, because remember, x cannot equal zero, because if x equals zero, your denominator would be zero. So that's why we wrote the greater than sign. Um, so zero is not included, so therefore, it's going to become a parenthesis. All right, so um, that is basically uh, what we have here for as far as when we have a radical. Just make sure you're careful as far as understanding that the radicand has to be greater than or equal to zero and the denominator cannot equal zero. And as long as you kind of uh, recognize those two things, uh, you'll be good. And now it kind of comes into learning about discontinuities of our functions.